Hello, everybody. Hey. Um, so I've been going round and round for a little bit here on HB uh, 96, the bill to make abortion illegal. And my representative in the House, uh, Jared Patterson, uh, House District uh, 106. Uh, he's my representative, right? I voted for him. Um, talked to him quite a bit. He listened to me give a speech or a talk on uh, pro-lifeism versus abolitionism. He knows fairly well the difference between pro-life regulationism and abolitionism, okay? And um, so anyway, when it came time to uh, co-sponsor a bill, HB uh, 986, to make abortion illegal in Texas, um, he refrained from it, ignored it as much as possible, wouldn't, uh, you know, I didn't hear anything on it, he was quiet. He said that the reason he didn't uh, come out with a bill um, right when he got elected, or his first bill, was because um, he's just, you know, he's a first time representative, right? First time, so he wanted to take things easy. But, you know, once his bill was out, we were asking him why, you know, why don't you co-sign it? And basically he said, and I have the, the conversation, basically said, well, you know, the bill won't succeed because um, you're gonna criminalize women in this bill, right? And um, yeah, if you make something illegal, if you do it, you're a criminal. That's just the way it is, right? And uh, so he says that that'll never work. And I'm like, well, is it that it'll never work or is that it will criminalize women? And he wouldn't give us a succinct answer, right? He won't, he won't, he's, he's playing the pro-life game. I want to make abortion illegal or I want, well, here's what they say. I want to abolish abortion. I just don't want to make it illegal. We don't, we don't want to make women criminals, right? How can we make women criminals? That's not right. That's, you want to make women criminals? You want to put women to death? That's what they say, right? They want to put, you, you want to put women to death. That's what you want to do, right? Well, here's the thing. Uh, Jared and other guys like him, you know, first Baptist type Republicans, right? Christian Republicans who say they're pro-life have no problem regulating abortion, have no problem regulating child sacrifice. So let's look at child sacrifice. This is what it is, right? Instead of the girl wanting to uh, raise her child, she wants to finish her high school um, years, right? Without the burden of having to raise a child. So she sacrifices that child so she can finish her high school unencumbered by this human, right? It's child sacrifice. She doesn't sacrifice and do the work, right? Her family doesn't sacrifice and help her. The baby is sacrificed, right? Same with college girls, same with people who have like four girls and they don't want their fifth girl, so they go ahead and abort it and it's totally legal, right? So anyway, that's what the regulationists do. They just regulate how child sacrifice can and can't be done, right? So an abolitionist bill comes along and it says, no, 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 it's murder, we need to make it illegal. If you commit murder, then whatever the penalty for murder is, you know, because there's first degree, second degree, you know, you can, you can be put on death, death row for murder, right? So whatever that is, that applies, right? But all these good Baptist, first Baptist pro-lifers are like, no, 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 we gotta follow what the Pope says, what the Catholic Pope says, and women are victims, we can't criminalize them. So that's basically it. Since the Catholics are the ones that basically fund most all of the pro-life stuff, uh, the uh, Baptists uh, have to go along with it, and they just do. They cowtail down to, um, you know, to the pro-life movement, right? That's where the money is. So, but let's, let's look at this for a second, because even I dehumanize these babies to a large, large extent, all right? And so do all these Republican, Baptists, and Catholics, and Christians, and Methodists, whatever. It doesn't matter. Um, but let's take how the pro-lifers, let's take how Jared, deals with abortion, child sacrifice, and let's, let's put that to anything else. Let's use that logic on anything else, all right? Like, um, yeah, same with Abbott, that's right. Abbott is against abolition. Oh, he wants abolition, but he doesn't want to make it illegal, a crime, right? So, but, all right, so let's take this and add it to, um, let's say if rape was legal, all right? Right now, rape is legal in our state, let's just say that. Okay, for the sake of argument. Guys like Jared from the First Baptist Church of Frisco or wherever, right, wherever he goes, um, 
he would come out and say, all right, look, I don't want to make rapists go to jail. Like, that wouldn't be loving. Like, we have a ministry to help people that have raped women. We should, like, show them mercy and grace and love of Christ. So I can't make abortion illegal. I'm sorry. I can't make rape illegal because I don't want to put men in prison. You want to put men in prison? Should men go to prison? You want to make men criminals. That's what guys like Jared would say. That's what they would say. That's what the pro-life movement says, right? So, um, so what Jared would do is he would regulate rape. He would say, okay, look, before you rape somebody, you have to make sure you don't have any STDs. Like if you rape somebody and you have an STD, then that's a criminal event. Like you can't do that. That would be wrong, right? And so that would save some women from getting raped because some men who have STDs um, wouldn't rape them. And if they did, we could lock them up and put them away, right? So, so let's make that illegal. That's a perfect pro-life um, stance. Or they could say, all right, look, we'll never pass you can't rape women laws. So let's go ahead and make it to where, you know, you can't rape women under 18. Like, let's give them the first 18 years of their life free from rape, right? Let's pass the first 18 years you can't rape them. That'd be a good pro-life bill, right? That's how the pro-lifers deal with it. They regulate rape, when you can rape, how you can rape, and where you can rape, all right? And why you can rape. So that's what the, that's what the pro-lifers do. That's what guys like Jerry does. He sits in church every Sunday, most likely, at a Baptist church, and he hears about, woe to you who write iniquitous decrees. Woe to you, the Bible says. An iniquitous decree is a wicked law, like the heartbeat law. Before a baby has a heartbeat, you can kill them. But after it has a heartbeat, you can't kill them. And if the Supreme Court says that it was a, you know, bad law, then it gets swiped away, right? And they all adhere to it. And the pro-lifers don't care if you win or if you lose. If you win, they're like, come on, send us more money. We're winning. If you send us more money, we would win more. And if they lose, they're like, come on, we're losing. You have to send us more money. We're losing. Don't you care? Don't you care about these babies, right? So, all right, so we talked about rape. Let's talk about child molestation, all right? If child molestation was legal, if you could molest kids, all right, guys like Jared, all right, with the pro-life mentality would say things like this. Well, I'm against molesting kids, right? I'm against it, but we can't make it illegal. So let's just go ahead and uh, say you can only molest kids uh, like after they're five years old. Because all those kids before five, they should at least get five years, right? Let's make a law saying you can't regulate a child, you can't um, molest a child before five years, right? But after five years, we'll work on that later, you know? Um, we'll do it incrementally. But the difference between an abolitionist increment and a pro-life increment is an abolitionist increment is never wicked. So you would never say, um, like Wilberforce, he, he had an increment saying, okay, let's make it illegal to ship slaves to England. It's, no, it's now illegal to ship slaves to England. That'll help us, right? Um, that's an increment. But he didn't say, well, you can, you, you can only ship slaves to England that are like over 30 years old. But under 30 years old, let's leave them alone. Like Wilberforce would never do that, right? He's always for full abolition in everything he does, always honoring God, never doing evil so good in my kind, right? It doesn't mean immediatism, where all of a sudden everything has to be done exactly at the same time. That's, that's impossible almost, right? But we can do things incrementally as long as we honor God in everything that we do. Every increment must not be sinful, may, must not be wicked, must honor God, all right? So... Guys like Jared, who say, well, we can't, it'll always fail. He'll never win, right? That's what, that's what William Wilberforce always heard. He'll never, he'll never make slavery illegal. Garrison, too, same thing. He'll never do it. He'll never do it. 
you know? Um, so let's just, let's just regulate. We'll just continue to regulate. I mean, it's huge. We get lots of money from it, right? We don't need to make it illegal. Like, it, that'll never pass. You'll never do it, Todd, right? But we have a bill in Texas right now, HB 948, that will make abortion illegal and make it a crime to murder babies. And you know what? It, it might get a hearing. But I'll tell you what, I bet it's going to be tabled, you know? And even if it's not tabled, it most likely won't pass. But that doesn't mean we don't try, you know? And we'll take the Jareds down, right? We'll oppose them. We'll say, we'll, we'll save the means and we'll save the information. And they'll, they'll be known as anti-abolitionists because they are anti-abolitionists, even though they say, oh, I want to abolish abortion. I just don't want to make it, make anybody a criminal for doing it. You know, it's like, do whatever you want. It's okay. But, you know, we should have a law saying you, you can't kill babies. But if you do, it's okay. Right? That's crazy. We have dehumanized babies 100%. We've just dehumanized them. You know, if a woman murders her five-year-old child, all right, how, you know, whatever the, the circumstances are, she goes before a judge and she has lawyers. And she makes a plea, and she defends herself, right? And the judge and the courts determine if it's first-degree murder, second-degree murder, if it's manslaughter, you know, whatever, right? But whatever the law is for murder and the degree, that's how it should be applied. So let's just say that women were, it was okay to murder women or babies that were five years old. And we're saying, hey, it's wrong to murder babies up to five years, you know, post-birth post abortions, right? It's wrong. We, we disagree with it, but it's legal. Let's just say that. All right. Pro-lifers would say, well, let's just move it to like four and a half years. Look how many babies we'll save. You know, we'll save all those babies. Let's do it. That's an iniquitous degree. decree. God hates that. And you know, all you representatives that go to church on Sunday and all you pro-lifers, all of you, right, that won't stand up for justice and mercy, you should read Isaiah 1 and you should read um, Amos 5. And see God talking to his people, where he says to his people, though your prayers be many, I will not hear them. Your big conventions, your big churchy meetings, I hate them. I hate them. They're a stench to my nostrils. I hate your worship songs, the whole bit. He said, first, bring justice and mercy to the land. All right? And then bring your, your offerings your sacrifices to me. This is God talking to his people where child sacrifice was in the land and they weren't bringing justice and mercy. And I tell you what, when you make a bill or a law that's like, okay, you, if, if the baby comes halfway out, you can't kill it. So let's just make that law, a partial birth abortion. That's wicked. That's a wicked law. You should not be able to murder anybody. And you know what? The Texas Constitution forbids um, abortion and so does the Constitution of the United States. All right, but we cowtail down to the Supreme Court, and it is wicked because they're just an opinion. The magistrates need to protect the babies in their communities and their states. And when the Supreme Court becomes wicked and evil and has a wicked um, opinion, we don't have to follow it. We don't have to um, comply with it. It's just an opinion, right? So Texas needs to support HB nine nine. 896, we need to make abortion illegal, and we need to um, start telling all these, you know, pro-life leaders that, look, you may consider yourself a pro-life person, but your pro-life leaders aren't working to make abortion illegal. So we need to tell them we want to make abortion illegal. I've talked to so many people that have been pro-life for so long, and when I told them, you know that they do not want to make it illegal because they don't want to criminalize women. They're like, what? It's a crime to murder people. Before God, it's a crime. If you're a Christian and you say that people who murder their babies, their children, should not be punished, you have no concept of justice or mercy before God. Because justice must come for mercy to come. Right? So we can't ignore child sacrifice. We cannot regulate child sacrifice. And the wicked, wicked pro-life Republicans who think that 
the, the battle is between pro-choice, who they can do whatever they want already. Nobody prosecutes anybody in you know, committing abortions. Nobody prosecutes anybody, anything in Planned Parenthood. Planned Parenthood sells body parts, they market everything. I mean, they do all sorts of wicked and evil. And you know what? They should, because nobody cares. Nobody cares about God. Nobody loves God. You go to church every Sunday and you worship and you pray to him, but you don't care that abortion, child sacrifice is legal and we should care, right? If we don't try to make it illegal, then Planned Parenthood, they are evil. They're gonna do this stuff and we allow them to do it. If everybody in the Republican Party is pro-life, why can't they just be abolitionists and make it illegal? They could do it like that. Abbott could do it like that. But you know what? Abbott opposes abolition. And he may get on Facebook, and he, there might be YouTube videos of him saying, oh, yeah, Jeremiah, we're going to make abortion illegal. But I'll tell you what. He opposes criminalizing uh, abortion, right? Abortion will always be legal with men like Abbott at the helm. All right, we need to call him to repent. How are these good Baptist young men, like good men, how do they become so corrupted as soon as they enter the house, as soon as they enter politics? It's, it's wicked. Where are the Wilberforces? Where are the, uh, the garrisons? Come on. You know, where are the pastors calling for the abolition, the criminalization of murder? Or where are they? That's my wife. One of the most important people, or the most important person in my life. Thank you for listening, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Hey, honey.